Hey everyone, Steve here from Grimwood Hollow. In this video, I'm going to show you how we made our pop box Halloween prop. We wanted to create our own unique take on the monster in a box gag, so I started with a simple sketch to work out the design. First, we built the wood crate with a hinged lid and mounted a lid lifter kit from Fright Props inside. And here's our first animation test. We wanted it to look like a crate full of pumpkins. So next, we built a false bottom shelf out of gator board and attached foam pumpkin pieces on top. Next, I started sculpting the pumpkin imp heads. I posted a video on our channel last year that shows the entire process of how we created these. Click on this link at the top to check it out. Next, we did a quick mock-up of the imp. In this early version, he was going to be pushing off with his arms, but after testing it with these strings, we realized it could be problematic. So instead, we decided to create these fixed posed arms. That way, they wouldn't get tangled and caught on anything. We then painted the interior of the crate black. Now it was time to finish painting the imp heads. The next step was to build the lower crate of pumpkins that would act as a pedestal for the pop box crate. We also gave all the foam pumpkins a new paint job just to make them look a little more realistic. Next we glued raffia around the pumpkins to make it look like they were packed in straw. So now it was time to paint and age the crates. We did washes of watered down brown and black paint and allowed it to drip, pool, and dry for a really great weathered look. Then we jumped back on the imps and added cheesecloth, creepy cloth, and latex to create his rotten pumpkin guts and vines. Next, we did a brown wash on his bones and guts to really gunk it up and create some cool contrast. The final step for the imp was adding this latex and paper towel pumpkin stem. We decided not to use a real pumpkin stem on this guy because we thought it would be a little too fragile. Next, we hooked up the sound and lights. We used two limit switches that would get tripped when the lid opened, setting off the imp's laughing sound effects and turning on the LED lights. 
This was a cheap sound recording device that I used that would ultimately have to be replaced. This was our very first test with sound and lights, and it was, well, <laughs> a little underwhelming. The quality of the sound recording module was horrible, and the second time the lid would hit the limit switch, it would turn it off. So that was a bummer. <laughs> and this was our first test in the dark. At least the orange LEDs worked great and created that dramatic low lighting effect. I immediately decided to swap out that cheap sound module with this awesome Fright Prop speaker. This thing was crazy loud and you could load your sound file straight onto an SD card, which was great. For the imp laugh, I recorded myself laughing like a lunatic and then tweaked the sounds in my editing program. And here's our first test with the new speaker. The new speaker worked perfectly and we're so glad we swapped it out. If you live in SoCal, you may already be familiar with these awesome lists that our buddy Derek from Van Oaks Props puts out every year. Derek is extremely supportive of our haunt community. He compiles this list, designs and prints the flyers on beautiful cardstock, and even hand delivers them to many haunters and businesses. If you aren't familiar with his channel, Van Oaks Props, you should check it out and sub immediately. Derek shares tons of valuable tips and tricks on everything from painting to lighting, prop making, and more. I'll include a link to his channel in the description below. The SoCal Haunt List is what inspired us to create our pop box prop. It was a way for us to proudly display and distribute the list while suckering in people for a little scare at the same time. So next, we built the wood holder for the Haunt Lists and then we mounted it to the top of the crate. And to finish it off, we added some LED candles with hot glue drips and some fall leaves that helped to hide some of the hardware. And now, let's take a peek inside. You unscrew a couple of screws, remove the front panel, and here's the guts. The wiper motor lifts the lid, the PicoVolt prop controller records the animation, and this wireless relay is so the remote control can trigger the prop. This is the 12 volt DC power supply and the plug runs down through the bottom and out the side of the prop so you can plug it in. This is for the battery that runs all of the LED lights. And these are the wires for the LEDs and speaker that go up to the limit switches. And finally, this is the battery pack for the Fright Prop speaker that is hidden in the back on this shelf. And this little lag bolt that's hidden under a fall leaf is what attaches the pumpkin imp to the lid. 
And now for a brand new upgrade we did for 2021. Our candles were originally just melted and glued to the crate and we couldn't access the batteries or the switch. So we decided to make these new candle units that are removable. So now you just unscrew them and all three candles are one solid unit glued to an eighth inch piece of plywood that we carefully cut out. Now you can access the batteries and the switches. All we had to do is drip some hot glue to hide the plywood and they were good to go. These were a way better solution. There was just one thing left to create, the bell tree. The idea was that the lid of the crate would pop open and slam into these bells in the tree and add a little extra punch to the scare. I often like to add additional sounds and effects to scares. You can see a great example of this in our final scare of the Haunted Vineyard when the monster slams open the door and it explodes into a mobile of junk hanging from the ceiling. It literally floored people. And now, Here's our finished pop box in action. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video and thanks again so much for watching.